What's going on, everybody? I am not in the physics classroom, but I am going to do some physics with you right now. So today we're going to cover what we did in class today, and that was busting the movie myth. OK, so we're going to look at our bust in the movie myth and we, how, how we looked at this uh, application of the conservation of momentum or we tested conservation of momentum. And specifically, we're going to look at some momentum graphs because this has been something we've been struggling with in class. And I think it's time we go over some of these graphs and how these graphs look, especially through collisions. OK, so let's start. Bust in the movie myth. The idea was in this lab that we had a dart that had an initial velocity that we measured in a photo gate. We can call it. 11.0 meters per second. This cup was sitting at rest. We had two points in this collision. We had the before uh, action and we had the after action. And the after action is once the, the dart collides with the cup, it sticks in the cup and then the cup leaves the table. And so we had to design a procedure to figure this out. And so we wanted to really prove that the momentum uh, before or the momentum initially was equal to the momentum finally over here. So essentially we're proving was initial momentum, like was it equal to final momentum? And so we wanted the mass of the dart over here times the velocity initial of the dart. And it should hopefully have been equal to the mass of the dart plus the mass of the cup multiply by that final velocity. And this was really the crux of the problem was how do we find this final velocity after the collision takes place? What do we do there? And so in order for us to do that, we relied on our kinematics, our free fall type uh, skills. And we said, well, um, if I do shoot this thing and it launches off of a table, I can go ahead and measure this change in X down here. I can measure this change in Y down here. And I can eventually work my way back uh, using kinematics and free fall like we've done so, so, so many times to figure out what the speed of this system was after the collision. And so this is what we did in class. And hopefully this is another example of a collision uh, into a free fall problem that we were able to kind of use uh, multiple physics tools together in order to figure this out. But that's not really what I, want to, what I want to talk about today. What I would rather talk about today is the graphs. I'd rather talk about the graphs that go along with this type of motion, the graphs for the dart, the graphs for the system, the graphs for the uh, cup, the graphs for the cup dart system, the graphs for the center of mass. All of these graphs are the graphs that I want to talk about. So first things first, let's go ahead and think of our three different uh, objects in this motion, before and after a uh, collision. So let's go ahead and think about the dart. Let's go ahead and think about the cup. And let's go ahead and think about our system. And the system is oftentimes referred to as the center of mass or COM. All right, so we're gonna have a couple of axes and we'll sketch these all on time axis for now. And the first thing that I wanna graph and or just like examine is how does the momentum of each of these objects uh, or, or parts of my system change relative to time. So let's think about the dart. And the dart starts, let's say the dart starts uh, in motion. Okay, the dart starts after it's left the, the, the gun or, or the nerve gun. It is in motion. How does this momentum change for the dart? We have to ask ourselves the same question we always ask ourselves. If something is going to change, was there an outside force? There's not an outside force acting on the object. There's probably not a change in its motion. So let's think about it. The dart is already in motion. It's moving to the left. Let's go ahead and call this direction uh, moving this direction. We'll call that positive. Moving that direction, we'll call that negative. So the dart initially is moving leftward. We're going to call that positive. The dart has some positive momentum for a while. Eventually, it's going to collide. We can go ahead and throw this collision time on all three graphs. But at some point, the dart collides with the cup. What happens to the dart's speed when it collides with the cup? Is there a force on the dart when it collides with the cup? Yeah, right? When it collides with the cup, the cup pushes back on the dart. The dart, obviously, if we're thinking about it in like, you know, layman's terms, like the dart hits the cup, 
The cup has inertia. It has mass. The cup is also going to apply that force back on the dart. So the dart does experience a force. And that force is opposite the direction of the dart's motion. Slows it down is how we think about it now. But it is. The force is opposite the direction of the dart's velocity. So the velocity should decrease. Therefore, the momentum of the dart will decrease. Does the dart move back in the opposite direction? No, the dart continues moving forward, so the dart still maintains its positive momentum. It's just a much smaller positive momentum. So we see this quick decrease in momentum, and then the dart has a little less momentum here, okay? If we examine the cup, the cup starts at rest. The cup starts with absolutely no momentum. It's at rest. Then, is there an outside force on the cup? Heck yeah, there is. It feels a force from the dart, and that causes its momentum to become positive. It's larger because it's bigger than zero. There is momentum, and it's in the positive direction. The cup moves leftward, so we see some momentum here transferred into the cup. How much momentum is transferred into the cup is exactly equal to how much momentum is lost by the dart. Conservation of momentum. The value total over there should be equal to the value total uh, afterward. So that's a, a kind of a cool thing to think about is this value here, wherever this momentum is here, is equal to the sum of the momentum after the collision, which means this plus this momentum should be equal. So if I'm thinking about trying to make my graph super accurate, I'd be sure to say, okay, this momentum here is the tallest, this one is the shortest, and then this one's going to be a little less in this one because the conservation of momentum takes place. Now, it gets a little more complex uh, when you're learning this, but once you've got this down, it becomes much more straightforward. If the system or the center of mass is both the dart and the cup, we're thinking about both of these things together. And if I wanted to locate the center of mass, the center of mass would probably be inside the much more massive cup, but towards the dart. And so when I think about this, I'm asking myself, all right, where is, uh, is there an outside force on the dart and cup system? Because if there's not, well, then there's no change in momentum to the whole motion. And so as I think about this, um, I mean, the dart hits the cup for sure. The cup pushes back on the dart, but those are both internal forces. Um, there's not much friction because the dart or the cup is at the edge of the table. And I don't really want to think about too much. I'm not, I'm not trying to go beyond the scope of the initial uh, before the collision and immediately after the collision. I'm not going to talk about this momentum over here. It'd be very complicated. I could, but I don't want to talk about it. Um, so if I'm thinking about the moments before the collision and the immediate moments following the collision, what I understand is that there's no outside force in the direction of motion that would cause a change in velocity. And if that's the case, then we have no change in momentum. We see a constant pot. Well, that's a bad line a constant positive momentum the entire time. There's no outside force. So there's no change in momentum here, okay? This is the three object system. These are my uh, momentum that I've graphed here. So this is very, very interesting, I guess, okay? Um, let's think about uh, some different graphs. Let's go ahead and think about some different graphs. What if I don't want momentum anymore? How would these look different if these were a velocity and time graph? Now I'm trying to ask myself, are these things moving faster or slower? Are these graphs, VT graphs, different or similar to momentum graphs? Well, let's think. The dart is launched with an initial velocity. Is there an outside force on the dart before it collides with the cup? I mean, yeah, there's gravity, but we're thinking about only in the horizontal direction. We can even say that, right? These things are moving horizontally. There's my collision point. There's my collision point. There's my collision point. The dart starts moving leftward, which is our positive direction, until it collides with the cup. And once it collides with the cup, now it's moving at a much, much, much slower speed. Down here, there was an outside force opposite the direction of motion. It slowed it down. We talked about this. It looks really similar to our momentum graph. That's true. What about our cup graph? Well, our cup is at rest. It's not moving at all. 
zero velocity. How fast is the cup moving after it collides and sticks with the dart? Well, well, it's actually moving. This is where it gets a little different. It's actually moving at the exact same velocity as the dart. They stick together. They become one object. They were two. They stick. Now they become one object. So this is different. There's no such thing as conservation of velocity, at least in this case. So I'm not trying to balance out velocities. What I do have to understand is that the much more massive cup is going to move much slower, and the dart uh, is blocked or stopped, collided with, acted upon by a much larger cup, so that it also decreases. But these uh, velocities need to be the same. The velocity of both of these need to be the same. Uh, in terms of the center of mass, ask yourself again, is there an outside force on my system? If the answer is no, then the velocity of this does not change. The velocity of the center of mass does not change at all, okay? So velocity graphs are really similar, slightly different, right? Well, momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Um, so they take similar, they, they, they behave similarly. If momentum decreases, it's because velocity decreases. If momentum increases, it's because velocity increases, except for the strange cases when mass changes instantaneously, but those are pretty rare. Um, but in terms of like where are things conserved and where are things not conserved, understand that velocity is not a conserved quantity and understand that momentum, in fact, is a conserved quantity. So we have to consider both of those things. Okay. These are the graphs uh, that I think are, are unique or are important or that we might derive from this experience in class. Uh, I hope this is helpful. Drop If you have questions, drop it in the comments below. Send me an email or, as always, ask me in class. Until next time, see ya.